So, uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me to talk again here uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, the, my topic is fruit sources and cardiometabolic health in the PREDIMED study. This title has been chosen by uh, Cyril Kendall, so when he has <laughs> proposed me to talk about this, uh, I have never studied uh, the association between fruit consumption and, and, and uh, uh, cardio cardiometabolic diseases. We have we start working on this in the PREDIMED and PREDIMED Plus study. Especially Nerea Becerra has helped me to do this presentation. Thank you very much. So here you have my disclosures, especially I am a non-paid member of the Scientific Committee of the International Nut and Treat Fruit Foundation and the Institute de Nona International. Uh, fruit consumption is, uh, the, the amount of fruit consumption in Europe is uh, very high, as you can see here. Uh, in 17 out of 28 European countries, population eating uh, fruit at least once per day exceed 50%. So, and in case of Spain, as you can see here, we are at the third position, 65% of the population. So, uh, but uh, this consumption is very different because they are very, the, uh, a lot of determinants of this consumption. And one is the age. And here you can see that especially older individuals here in green consume in Spain uh, fruits in comparison to the adults or the teenagers of children. And I suppose that it happens in several countries. But also the pattern of fruit consumption is very different between countries. And here you have the pattern of consumption in Spain. Especially we consume orange. We are the first producers in the world. And also lemon and tangerine, so citric, citric fruits are the most consumed in Spain. There is a lot of information uh, and analysis in, uh, in the association between the fruit consumption, the frequency of fruit consumption and uh, cardiovascular disease and several endpoints. Here you have one of uh, uh, the last review, review paper in relation to this analyzing this association with several outcomes, as you can see here. But one of them, the, the strongest association is in relation to coronary heart disease, as you can see here, with uh, zero heterogeneity. But also to cardiovascular disease, hypertension, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. And it's for this that uh, in general, all health organizations and scientific societies, they recommend the consumption of fruit in order to prevent uh, cardiovascular disease, but also several other diseases. Uh, in relation to, to body weight, here you have the last uh, meta-analysis of uh, randomized clinical trials and prospective studies. And as you can see here, with using 11 randomized clinical trials, whole fresh fruit has been uh, inversely related to energy intake, especially when, especially when displacing energy-dense food, promotes weight maintenance or modest weight loss over periods of 3 24 weeks, and we have limited evidence suggesting that height intakes of fruit lead, lead, leads to weight loss. And in case of prospective uh, cohort studies, whole fresh fruit was associated with uh, or with no effect on weight or modest protect protections against weight gain. And here you have some pro protective mechanisms that uh, had been attributed to the fruit consumption, and here you have the, some mechanisms increasing the risk. Uh, the protective mechanisms uh, are related to a decrease in the caloric intake, 
uh, increasing society, so changing uh, because of the content of micronutrients and other phytochemicals, changing like lipolysis or adipogenesis, etc. But also now we have some information in relation to the changes in gut microbiota, so increasing the uh, production of uh, short-chain fatty acids uh, because of a decrease of firmicutes and an increase in bacteroidetes and actinobacteria. But uh, at the same time, you have here uh, some uh, uh, fruits are very rich in glucose, fructose, sucrose. So there are some possible uh, 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 mechanisms increasing the risk of, of weight gain. Uh, but what is more important is probably the form of fruit consumption. And uh, in this session, we will discuss about this. So it's whole fruit, or fruit juices, or dry fruit. Probably is not the same. Uh, here you have what it happens in case of 100 uh, fruit juices. And as you can see here, in relation to weight gain, there is evidence that 100 fruit juices consumption is associated with weight gain in young children and adults. And two meta-analyses do not suggest a strong association between uh, fruit juices and diabetic risk. And in, in case of cardiovascular disease, no association exists between 100 fruit uh, juices and most of the risk factors. In case of PREDIMED, we have published the association in relation to cardiovascular disease, and also we have observed a protective effect of whole fruit, but not in case of fruit juices. And probably is because uh, one of the one of the one of the most important uh, explanations of this difference between fruit juices and uh, whole fruits probably could be related to the rheology of the fruit. This is one of the possibilities, and the other one is in relation to the uh, because the, in the food frequency questionnaire usually do, do not distinguish between. Fruit juice, natural fruit juices and fruit juices with added sugar. And for, especially for the, the, the people that answer to the food frequency questionnaire, they cannot distinguish between both. Uh, it has been observed in more than, in, in several trials, in three or four trials, that is not the same in relation to the total energy intake. If you consume whole fruit or fruit juices. And here you have a, a crossover study that has been published several years ago in 2007 uh, that, um, uh, in, in which they, the authors have uh, randomized the, the, the individuals in order to uh, uh, consume uh, carbohydrates as a liquid form or solid form, in this case watermelon, fat as coconut milk or not milk, so as, as liquid form, as solid form, and the same in case of dairy, so milk or cheese. And it has been demonstrated that the, 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 there is no food, there is a compensation in food in case of uh, solid foods, but not in case of liquid food. So at the end of the day, they consume more energy if they consume this amount of carbohydrate, fat, or proteins in form of liquid in comparison to the solid form. This could be one of the possible explanations in the, this association with weight. Uh, in case of dry fruit, uh, is another form. So it's fruit without water, but the same amount of sugar and uh, also with several phytochemicals, minerals, etc. But I think that this is the, this, uh, Dr. Jenkins will talk about this, so I prefer not to say anything. Uh, uh, here uh, you have, uh, so it's for this that uh, we have tried to analyze this in relation to the PREDIMET study. And uh, PREDIMET study, as you know, 
The PREDIMET study is a multicenter uh, randomized clinical trial aiming to assess the beneficial effects of the Mediterranean diet on cardiovascular disease prevention. Uh, and this uh, trial has been conducted in individuals free of cardiovascular disease at baseline, and they have between 55 and 80 years uh, with a high risk of metabolic disease. So they have type 2 diabetes or three or more cardiovascular risk factors. And these individuals have been randomized to two Mediterranean diets enriched with virgin olive oil or nuts and compared to another uh, recommendations in relation to the uh, low-fat diet as the American uh, Heart Association has uh, advised uh, several years. And we have uh, analyzed this population as a cohort in order to demonstrate or to analyze this association between fruit consumption and uh, uh, metabolic syndrome in this case. And as you can see here, here we have the natural fruit juices and here you have the bottled fruit juices we have observed. A, a, a decrease in the incidence of metabolic syndrome in both cases when people consume between one and five portions per week, but an increase in the risk of metabolic syndrome when they uh, consume more than five portions per day. Uh, here you have uh, the case of the natural fruit juices in PREDIMED. And we have analyzed what of the, of the components of the metabolic syndrome have been related to the, this increase in the incidence. And as you can see here, in case of the natural fruit juices, we have observed a positive association in case of abdominal obesity, but not by, but the, for the, the rest of the, of the components. And in case of bottled fruit juices, we have observed a positive association in hypertriglyceridemia. Also, we have analyzed the association between fruit consumption and uh, diabetes incidence. This is new data. It's the first time that you, that you have this information. It's not published yet. And we have analyzed this association in case of whole fruit, total juices, natural juices, and bottled juices. And as you can see here, no association has been demonstrated. We have analyzed the different types of fruits and the association with, uh, with the diabetes, and only we have observed a protective effect of bananas in relation to this, uh, to diabetes, but not for the rest of the fruit. Probably, in case of, uh, uh, of the citrix, uh, we have a high consumption, but no uh, association has been demonstrated. And now we have data in relation to the PREDIMED Plus study. Uh, the PREDIMED Plus study is an ongoing uh, study. So now we, are, we have uh, randomized 6,000 people, uh, 6,800 people to the trial. And now we are at three uh, years of mean follow up of this population. Uh, the, in, the, in case of the PREDIMED Plus study, remember that is a, a study aiming also to assess the beneficial effects of a lifestyle intervention on, on, on um, the prevention of cardiovascular disease. It's a multicentric also study uh, that we have 23 recruiting centers in Spain that have been recruited these uh, participants. In total, uh, 6,874 people randomized to uh, an intensive weight loss lifestyle intervention using a restricted Mediterranean, energy restricted Mediterranean diet, but also physical activity promotion and behavioral support, and uh, the rest to uh, an, uh, usual care using the same recommendations that we have used in the PREDIMED uh, uh, one study. And we have analyzed at baseline the association between the consumption of fruit and fruit juices and the risk of several cardiovascular risk factors. And as you can see here, we represent the fruit consumption, and we have observed a negative uh, uh, association between fru uh, the frequency of fruit consumption and the weight circumference, uh, the glucose uh, levels, glucose levels, triglycerides, and also the LDL cholesterol, not for the rest of the uh, cardiovascular risk factors that we have assessed. 
and this was observed especially for those individuals consuming more than three servings per day or of fruit consumption. And also we have analyzed this in relation to juice, to juice fruits and juice consumption. And here you have the total juice consumption and we have observed an inverse association, not for the body mass in here you have the total juices, natural juices and bottled juices. And we have observed an inverse association in case of weight circumference for those individuals consuming more than one serving per day. The same for the glucose level, sorry, the same in case of natural juices, but not for the bottle juice, juices. Also, an, uh, an inverse association in case of glucose for uh, total juices and natural juices, but not for bottle juices. And no association for the triglycerides, no association for the HDL cholesterol, no association for the LDL cholesterol, and for systolic and diastolic blood pressure. So, we can conclude that in Europe, approximately 50% of the adult population consume at least one serving per day of uh, fruit. Due to difference in the matrix, maybe not all fruit sources have the same effect on cardiometabolic effects, on cardiovascular risk factors, so we need to study this in the future. Fruit consumption has been stronger related to a reduced risk of coronary heart disease, and mixed results have been reported for fruit juices. Uh, although evidence from uh, meta-analysis of obser observational studies showed an inverse association between fruit consumption and type 2 diabetes risk, these results have not been proved in elderly individuals of cardio uh, at high risk of cardiovascular disease at, uh, in, the in the context of the Predimeter study. Fruit juices are not uh, associated with type 2 diabetes risk in individuals with high cardiovascular risk. The consumption of natural and bottled uh, fruit juices is inversely associated with metabolic syndrome when consumed between one and five servings uh, per week. Beyond this range, uh, both are associated with a high, higher risk of uh, metabolic syndrome. Consuming at least three servings of fruit is associated with lower weight circumference, glucose, triglycerides, and LDL in the in PREDMED plus study, not in all the cohorts. And both total fruit juices and natural fruit juices are associated with lower weight circumference and glucose levels in early elderly individuals with metabolic syndrome, consuming at least uh, one serving per day. Uh, so to confirm the results, we need more information, more uh, prospective studies, and especially uh, randomized clinical trials. Thank you very much.